Welcome to our little tale of woe, triumph against impossible odds, terror, and managerly responsibility. Our story begins in the calm waters above the town of Bikini Bottom. As we descend beneath the waves, we find another day. Wait a minute! Hold your seahorses! Who are you? I'm the manager of this establishment. Everything is gonna be just fine. I'm really scared, man! You got a name? Phil? <laughs> Come on, Phil, stay with me. I've only got one shot at this. Gotta have the right tools for the job. Bingo. Now I want you to do me a favor, Phil. What? Say cheese. Ah, the beginning. A little yellow friend awakes from his slumber and prepares for the biggest day of his life. Yet despite his dreams, he is not honored with the manager position of the new Krusty Krab 2. So he sulks off to drown his depression in ice cream at the local Goofy Goobels. Across the street, jealous of Mr. Krab's success, the diabolical plankton hatches Plan Z. He steals King Neptune's crown and frames Mr. Krabs for selling it to the far off and dangerous land of Shell City. Let us now join our heroes in the midst of their self pity. There you are, Patrick. I've been trying to find you all evening. Uh, it's 8 in the morning, SpongeBob. Oh my gosh, 8 o'clock. I am late for work. Mr. Krabs is gonna kill me. Oh. Mr. Krabs. Back at the Krusty Krab, King Neptune confronts Mr. Krabs about his alleged thievery. He asks if there is anyone present who may vouch for Mr. Krabs' character. And our yellow knucklehead McSpazitron shows up to accuse Mr. Krabs of being a horrible person. King Neptune zaps Mr. Krabs, causing SpongeBob to sober up quickly. He selflessly volunteers to journey to Shell City and retrieve the King's crown. Freezing Mr. Krabs in place, King Neptune grants a six-day reprieve, so SpongeBob and Patrick may attempt to retrieve the crown. King Neptune's daughter Mindy provides SpongeBob and Patrick with a magic mirror, through which she can communicate and assist our heroic duo. We continue as SpongeBob and Patrick arrive at the paddy wagon. With the chaos of Bikini Bottom behind us, SpongeBob and Patrick begin their long journey towards Shell City. However, with SpongeBob gone, all is not well. Plankton is now selling the Krabby Patty at the Chum Bucket, and with every purchase, customers are getting a mind-controlling bucket helmet. Squidward has discovered Plankton's plan to create an army of bucket heads. Will Squidward save the day? No. On the outskirts of town, SpongeBob and Patrick meet some of the charming locals who tell them they will not last long outside the city. But our friends do not listen. They should have listened. Our heroes are now stranded in a vast desert with only their feet for transportation. Our heroes, having foiled Plankton's evil plans, continue across the desert. But Plankton remains one stubby step ahead of them. He sends someone to make sure that they will fail. He is a vicious, ruthless killer named Dennis. Fortunately, SpongeBob and Patrick have discovered the paddy wagon in a parking lot. But the key is missing. So the only thing to do is to go into the rough, tough bar and look for it. Good luck, my friends. You're going to need it. Patrick, step on it! Ah! Come on, kitties. Have some ice cream. Jump for it, Patrick! And so, the hideous creature was vanquished by an even more hideous creature coming from the deep ocean 
French. Well, we lost our car again. Never mind the car. Where's the road? There's the road on the other side of the deep, dark, dangerous, monster-infested trench. <laughs> After gulping, SpongeBob and Patrick decided to throw in the towel. Luckily, Mindy arrived and showed them what was really going on back in Bikini Bottom. Plankton had transformed Bikini Bottom into Planktopolis. The sight of their city convinced our heroes to continue on to Shell City. So, in order to become men, they cried like little babies. But someone was hot on their tail. With no time to lose, Princess Mindy thought of a better idea. And our heroes quickly became men and marched toward the treacherous trench. And that is how SpongeBob and Patrick escaped the trench full of hideous, disgusting monsters. Meanwhile, Dennis continues to follow our heroes. Some unsavory types attempt to get in his way, but he manages to reason with them. And so, like two tin cans in a trash compactor, SpongeBob and Patrick continue on, blissfully unaware of the danger closing in on them. Standing in their way, is a field full of stanky garbage. But with Shell City somewhere on the other side, they have no choice but to push on. Finally, I got you right where I want you. That's a big boot! Don't worry! This'll only hurt a lot! <laughs> I love this job! Bigger boot! Wait, Pat! This bigger boot saved our lives! Yay! Thank, Thank you, stranger. stranger! It's the Cyclops! Run! And so, SpongeBob and Patrick escaped the clutches of the mad, murderous Dennis. Only to be captured by the even more hideous Cyclops. And then, they passed out. Awakening in a dreamy, goofy, goober wonderland where... Oh, wait a minute. Hey, it's the Goofy Goober. Patrick, there's the Goofy Goober himself. Oh boy. As I was saying, SpongeBob and Patrick continued on, allowing nothing to distract them. Goofy 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 Goober, 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 goober. Yeah. It's just a dream. Don't waste your time. Uh, go ahead. When SpongeBob and Patrick awaken from their sweet dreams of ice cream sundaes and dancing peanuts, they discover that they have become prisoners of the Cyclops. For you see, gentle viewers, our heroes had at long last made it to Shell City and had discovered its awful secret. Shell City was nothing more than a souvenir shop. Those who were captured were dried up and turned into smelly knickknacks. And that is precisely what was happening to our two friends. The situation seemed to be completely and utterly hopeless. But they were saved by the tear of the Goofy Goobell, as well as a conveniently placed sprinkler system. King Neptune's crown lay nearby, but our heroes still needed to escape the treacherous depths of Shell City and get past their most dangerous adversary, the Cyclops. And so, after escaping the hideous fate that awaited them in the clutches of the Cyclops, SpongeBob and Patrick find themselves standing on the beach, staring out at the vastness of the ocean. How are we going to get back to Bikini Bottom? I can take you there. Who are you? I'm not a lifeguard, but I play one on TV. Hooray! Hooray! So, uh, where's your boat? Boat? <laughs> Nothing can stop us now! Bikini Bottom, here we come! Yay, Patrick! We did it! Hooray for SpongeBob and Patrick! <laughs> now, where were we? Wait, Dennis! Uh, look out behind you! That's it! I'm through messing around! See you later, fools! Ah! Ah! Goodbye! A 
after many adventures, our heroes arrive back home. But it is a much, much different place from the one they left. Where there once was rolling green fields and bustling city streets, there is now Planktopolis, a city as dark and twisted as the heart of its teeny tiny ruler. All of Bikini Bottom's familiar faces are now covered by unfashionable mind-controlling buckets. And perhaps most horrible of all, King Neptune is at the Krusty Krab too, preparing to fry Mr. Krabs. Bikini Bottom's only hope rests with a small yellow sponge and a pink sea star. Can they survive the dangers of Planktopolis? Ooh, let us hope so. Kill him! Kill him, you idiot! Idiot? Uh, no, no! Uh, idiot! <laughs> uh, French for a uh, handsome man. Ah! Eugene Krabs, it looks like you were innocent the whole time. Oh well, that's why pencils have erasers. And now to thank the brave heroes who recovered my crown and saved Bikini Bottom. SpongeBob and Patrick, you have performed a manly deed. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Mindy. I've learned a few things about myself. I may be a dork and a wingnut. And a knucklehead McSpazitron. Yes, but more importantly, I'm a kid, and I like being a kid. I'm just glad that everything is back to normal. And so ends the most heroic tale ever told in Bikini Bottom. And as the sun sets over the island paradise above the waves, we must stop and wonder how long until the sequel depends on the box office. Now go outside and get some sun. You look awful pale. <laughs>